Hey guys, thanks for joining me in this video devotion for today. I want to remind you that we are in the middle of a study that takes place over Zoom in our Echo Sunday gatherings. Every Sunday at 5 p.m. we meet over Zoom to uh, talk about some, some issues and some things that pertain to our Christian faith. And last week, if you may remember, we started this study on love. And basically what we're talking about are simple ways that you, that I, that, that all of us can share God's love. In this pandemic time, we've been cooped up in our homes for so long that my prayer has been that your faith and your walk with Christ has increased and that he has taught you some things in that quarantine time. So now that school is back and life seems to be somewhat back to normal, we can take what we've learned and share it with the people around us. And so what we're doing is we're talking about five simple ways that all of us can share and show God's love in our community. We talked about two of them last week. Remember, the first one was pray. You know, we can pray at any time for anyone, anywhere. Pray for us to show God's love. Pray for God to give us opportunities to share his love. And pray for those people who don't know the love of Christ yet. Those are the people that we are trying to reach. So pray. And then number two is pay attention. Places to share God's love and people to show that love to are all around us. And they are closer than we think. They're in our own neighborhoods and schools and communities. And so I told the story of Peter when he was healing that lame man at the temple gate outside Jerusalem. He was already there and Pentecost happened. The Holy Spirit came in and he was able to heal that person right in town. So pray and pay attention. Those are the first two ways to show God's love. We're going to talk about two more today. The first one is this. It's proclaiming the gospel. As we show God's love and share it, we need to remember that our message, our hope is that they would be filled, the people that we are showing God's love to, they would be filled with the love of God that we have. And so anytime we do something kind or nice or show that we are being polite to people, how about we say, hey, I'm being nice to you because I love God and he loves you. Just say something simple like that. When you're holding the door open for someone to say, God loves you. you know, I did that a lot when I was in school, in high school and college. I said, hey, God loves you as I opened the door for some of my classmates. And 90% of the time, I didn't get any response. But in those 10% times that I did, they were ways in which I could then further tell them that God loves them. Hey, buddy, you, you said God loves me as you held the door open for me. Why is that? You know, why are you saying that? Well, I'll tell you why. This idea of slipping the message of the gospel into caring for people is so important. Listen to what uh, John, the apostle John says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. John says, we know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. Did you catch that? God loves us, died for us, taught us, uh, showed us how to live, healed us. Jesus Christ was the epitome, was the, was the perfect picture of love in human form. And because he treated others with love and care and died for love, 
because of love, his love for us, we are then called to be a sacrifice and to give our time, our energy, our focus, our care towards others with the gospel message slid underneath. So that's number three. Proclaim the gospel in all the acts of love and kindness that you share. The fourth one is this. It's providing for those who are where you cannot be. Providing for those who are where you cannot be. I want to show you a picture here. All right. This is, if I hold it up right here, here we go. This was Hurricane Katrina in the fall of 2005. One of the most deadliest and costly tropical storms in history. Billions of dollars worth of damage in the places that it touched. Thousands of people dying. This is a picture of a part of the city of New Orleans and the surrounding area after Hurricane Katrina came through and levees broke and water rushed through and all of that. I'm showing you that picture because when Katrina hit the U.S. and New Orleans in the fall of 2005, I was a part of a campus Christian organization that contacted people uh, in the immediate aftermath of that to say, hey, we're from Valdosta, we're a college, what can we do to help? And we sent supplies and money and had a great form of communication with that particular organization. We were providing funds and supplies needed for people in that area to care for other people. Eventually, we were able to go to New Orleans in the spring of 2006. I was a part of a 60, 70 person group from our college organization that went to New Orleans and helped to get homes and minister to the needy and to just be a calming presence in that town after such a disastrous event. That's what we mean by providing uh, to those people who are where we cannot. I, ma I can't magically snap my fingers and be in the middle of Indonesia spreading the message of the gospel to the indigenous people there. I can't do that. But what I can do and what we can do is pray for those people who are. Send supplies. Send financial donations. Help to support the cause of Christ for those people who have a call to minister in those places. Another scripture verse that I want to listen to real quick here comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 9. Jesus is talking to his followers and he sometimes says stories in parables or explains stories with a hidden meaning so it takes longer for the, for the message to get through. And this is exactly what he does here. It's Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. Listen to this. Jesus traveled throughout an area teaching and announcing the good news of the kingdom. He healed diseases and illnesses, and when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his followers, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. We may not physically have a calling to go into the fields and harvest, which is just a, a wordplay of saying, go out and serve in areas that need to hear the message. But we can definitely pray and support those people who are. A great example of this is in the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, verses 15 through 18. I finally got to it. This is Paul writing to a church in Philippi about what they have done. Listen. 
You Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought you the good news of the gospel and then traveled on from there to Macedonia. No other church did this. The church in Philippi was instrumental in supplying and aiding Paul throughout his missionary journeys around the areas of the Mediterranean Sea in the early history of our church. And friends, we can be just as instrumental today. So, how are you going to proclaim the gospel as you show love to other people? How are you going to put your support and prayers behind ministries and agencies and people and organizations around the world who are in the harvest spreading the good news about Jesus. Come talk to me. I can get you plugged in with many ways that you can show God's love to others. Sometimes it's as simple as a smile and a comment that says, God loves you. Have a great day. And on that note, God loves you. Have a great day.